participation piece, participate as much as you'd like or as little as you'd like, but we would like you at the very least to collect up the ash liquids. But it's up to you. So I'll give you a quick brief of the, the facility here, the shop, and then we'll get started. So I'll give you kind of a walk through the equipment. Uh, first and foremost, the piece of equipment right in the center of the room, that's our main furnace. That's where the molten glass resides. There's 200 pounds of molten glass in the furnace at just about any given time. Obviously we use it and then we melt more glass and so on. But generally speaking, there's about 200 pounds of molten glass in there all the time. That furnace burns at 2175 degrees, 24 hours a day. So it's burning all day, all night, every day. Uh, what's that? Nipsco loves us. Yeah, they don't even send us a Christmas card. I think they should though. So the other piece of equipment, this piece of equipment to my left or your right, that's the reheating furnace. When the glass is out of the main furnace, for about 45 seconds to a minute, it starts to solidify. It's still very, very hot, but it's not malleable. We can't move it. So every minute or so, we'll go in and out of the reheating furnace to keep the glass malleable so that we can move it and manipulate it. That's what that furnace is for. This piece of equipment over here to your left that you see the flames licking out of, that's a pipe warmer. If we take cold steel into hot glass, it won't adhere, it just slips right off. So we always preheat the steel before we gather the glass. In fact, with you all, so it's a little bit easier, we'll take it off the, the pipe warmer and we'll give it an even deeper preheat in the reheating place. This piece of equipment I'm standing in front of is not just a table, it's called the marver. It's solid steel. And it's used to shape the glass and also control the temperature of the glass. So because it's steel, it will sap the heat out of the glass faster than just the ambient temperature. So we use this, the table to control the temperature of the glass because the glass will move where it's hottest. And if we want it to move on the end and not the back, we'll make sure that we marver the back. With that in mind, while this table is warm right now, it's going to continue to get hotter throughout the day. So I want you to assume everything's hot. Just make the assumption that everything's hot to include your donuts and coffee. Every, every surface, just assume it's hot. That way you'll be safe. Because what will ha have a tendency to happen is after we've worked glass on the marker for several hours, somebody wants to hop up here real quick, they got to hop in their end, just like that. Or if you reach down to grab something, it could be very, very hot. So always just touch something. If, if you see somebody at the grocery store, reach up for a can of peas and just kind of touch it before they grab it, probably a glass blower. Because that's the way we do. Before we pick anything up, we just kind of touch it and check it, make sure it's, make sure it's not going to burn us. Because that's always our greatest fear. But you don't have to worry about it. We will be, you'll have two of us on your shoulder the whole time you're working with glass. So we'll be right there. You'll get tired of hearing us say, watch your hand, keep it rolling. All those types of things we're going to keep saying throughout the day, but don't worry about it. That's how we keep you safe. Um, this is the glass blower's bench. This is where we sit when we're manipulating the glass. So you see these two rails. The pipe will be across the rail. Brian, give me a funny one. So when you're sitting at the bench, you'll be sitting here and the pipe's going to be across the rail because we always have to keep it turning. So that's what these rails enable us to do is a slow turn so the glass doesn't slump off. Now, are there any left-handed people here? Excellent. Lexi, me and you and Brian are all three left-handed. But in here, we're all right-handed. Because your right hand is going to be out here working, and your left hand is going to be in here as your motor. So we have the advantage that that's our motor. But we'll talk you through safe positioning of your hands, safe positioning of yourself as we're doing it. Because it's not a test. Well, there is. It's practical application. It's just not a written test. So we'll walk you through it as we go. So don't worry. You don't have to remember any of this. Some of the... 
some of the tools that you'll see us use today. This is called a block. It's solid cherry wood, and it's it's milled to have sort of a, a teardrop shape in it. Everything that we do, it always starts in that shape. And this block enables to shape the glass, enables us to shape it by just rolling it inside the block. Now it's saturated in water all the time because if it, if it was dry, when that 2100 degree glass hit it, it would immediately ignite and burn. So because it's saturated, when the glass hits it, it releases steam and the glass actually rolls on steam and of course, carbon, because carbon acts as a lubricant. So those are the blocks, they're different sizes. You'll see us using these. These are the jack, uh, the glass blowers, like Swiss Army knife. They're called jacks. They're used to cut a constriction in the glass. They're used to shape the glass. They're used to mold the glass and do different things. Again, when we're using these, everything on here is hot, except for right where your hands are. But we'll, don't worry, we'll walk through. These are called diamond shears for obvious reasons. The Italians developed these over 2,000 years ago because when you cut glass with shears, it kind of pushes away. These enable us to cut the glass in the 360 degree manner, so it just cuts it right down instead of pushing the glass away. The Italians were brilliant. These tools that you're going to see us use today and that you're going to use today, they've been around for over 2,000 years. They were developed in such a way that there's no need to improve them because they're perfect. Now, they're not 2,000 years old, but ones like this were used 2,000 years ago. The most highly technical piece of equipment we'll use here today is the Northwest Indiana Times. It's just wet newspaper, but it enables us to squeeze and manipulate the glass more so than the blocks. If they're static, this we can squeeze and move the glass. So you have a quarter inch of wet newspaper between 2,000 degrees in your hand, but the newspaper keeps us nice and cool. The forearm gets a little hot, but the hand stays cool. And then lastly, the tweezers. We use the tweezers to pull things, to poke things, but the most important thing that we do with the tweezers is we put water on the glass at the constriction point where it's going to come off the pipe. So we have to get the piece off the pipe somehow, so the glass is going to break once. <laughs> but it's going to do that because we're going to create a constriction point in the pipe. We're going to, we will dip our hands in the water. There's a little trough in here that holds the water. We'll pour the water onto that constriction point, flip it over and tap the pipe, and it'll come right off. And the last thing we'll do is we'll take your memorial globe or piece, whatever the case may be, and we're going to put it in this freezer to cool it down. But this freezer is 900 degrees. It's a hot freezer. Well, it's twice as hot as a pizza oven. But the, the purpose for this is it's, it's half as hot as that, twice as hot as a pizza oven, so we're, we're just kind of meet in the middle. But what we do here, it's called annealing. And what that does is it's going to slowly cool the glass over the next 24 hours. Because if you're going to hear glass breaking in here once we get started, but that's going to be the glass breaking off the pipes. Once we use the pipe, there's going to be an inch or two of glass that's still on the pipe. We're going to put the pipes over in those milk cans. And about three or four minutes after that, you're going to hear the glass shatter off the pipe. So if we were to take your memorial piece, put it out here on the concrete, five minutes later, it would come apart. Because those glass molecules are moving really rapidly when they're hot, and they slow at different rates. So if you've got different colors and different thicknesses, those molecules slow at different rates. So that creates tension and it pulls itself apart. The annealer keeps that from happening because it will slow all those molecules down at the same rate. It'll come down about a degree a minute over the next 24 hours. Okay, any questions? Uh, yes. That's great to ask. What exactly is that sandblasting? It's for sandblasting. <laughs> <laughs> but great question. One of the things that's hard in glass is to do something new and different. So what Brian has done is he's a graphic designer by education, glass blower by profession. But what he's done is he does designs on the computer, and then he will have them laser cut out of thick adhesive, overlay that onto the glass, and then sandblast the glass, and then pull that adhesive off, and then that stays in the foreground. I'll show you. Wow. So this is the that. 
sell the bases but because it's just cheaper for you all to get them but if you'd like a lighted base make sure you get it on amazon or whatever uh, but when they come they normally have an incandescent light bulb make sure you switch that out for an led because an led light bulb creates no heat and heat and glass is bad so we keep the leds going but yeah that gives you some idea you can do it round you can do a teardrop you mentioned you'd like your straight as opposed to swirl we can do whatever you'd like. The heart, the, um, the pendants. We do a bigger pendant just to hang in like a window or in your car. The smaller ones, they're still a little big, but you can wear them. Whatever you'd like. So that's your first decision is what shape you would like. And then your next decision, you all come on over here with me. We have a wall of color. So you can see by the pieces that we do there, the advanced pieces, we usually use two colors. You can use the same color family if you'd like, like an opaque blue and a transparent blue it, as an example, or you can use disparate colors. You can use a, a green and a blue or whatever the case may be. But you don't want to use too many colors because then it starts to muddy up and just kind of run together and it doesn't show as nicely. So we recommend only two colors. But your, your color choices are pretty limitless. You can mix them up, you can do whatever you'd like. Okay, and if you have any questions about the color, let us know, because this looks opaque, right? But this is a transparent color. It's opaque here because it's in a powder form, so it just looks opaque, but when it's melted, it's a nice gloss green. So if you have any questions, let me know, because there's a few of the colors that look different here than they would once they're done. All right, you guys make some decisions and then we'll get a sheet and write down what you'd like to do. You have a question, Lexi? Nervous, are you? I am. Of course. I am. That's the right answer. <laughs> it's also not true. <laughs> Eric, 
thing we did where you're not, you're creating that front arm so it's just lightly right across the surface, not pushing anything, just letting it smoothly roll itself out. So you can see that we're smoothed down the ridges out. So now you're seeing the ash in between the colors. At least the water's not hot, right? Yeah. It was it was this morning before we changed it out. Everything's hot. <laughs> Yeah, the, the cherry wood, it's a it's an interesting smell. Yeah, yeah. 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 The blue, you can see the blue, but um, a lot of the colors, they glow orange. Uh, It's most things do when they're hot, that's for sure. Oh yeah, how, how even though, the, well what's cool about these is, is it rolls, you can feel it, it's, it's not hot at all. So it rolls on carbon in water vapor. When that water vapor runs out, it'll start to stick. Yeah. But as long as there's carbon and water vapor, the glass will, will smoothly roll across it. Yeah. That's why we keep dipping it in and out because uh, if we don't, it'll it'll stick to the glass. Yeah. You can start to see those colors coming through though a little bit. Yeah. So these are essentially the same thing, but they're smaller. These are called marble blocks. So they're just used to round items out. So we're using different size circumferences to shape it. So I'll be using that on the next one. break it on the back end 
because then that way, you know, that'll be the bottom of the piece. We'll do a couple more heats and we'll be right. We're doing a lot of pendants, so I think we'll have a lot of room in there, so that shouldn't be a problem. Where do you want to start putting these at? Like, all the back? Yeah, you got back corner. Um, yeah, we got, a, we got a little bit of time still. Uh, I got a torch behind me, that's great. Now you can really see between those layers, though. So that's what that extra clear gather does. It looks as if the color is really on the surface, but it's just that extra layer of clear that really magnifies and lets you look between all of those layers. Yeah. yeah, you can see the colors in the back. Some of you will see that. I'll do one more. All right. And in a second, when we go to take it off, I'm going to have you get up and move because we'll have to walk through there to get to the box. So we'll go ahead and have you get up right now and we'll move the chair for you, dude. Okay, you can, you can move your chair right back there. That's, that's the next spot. Thank you, sir. So we're adding that water just on the very back, and that's how we're going to take it off. I'm going to leave the rod here at the bench and I'll follow you over. Okay. You can just start the car right in the corner if you want. You don't have to go all the way to the end. There you go. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can hang out there. Come on, 
Side of that that ball, we can actually tilt, you know, kind of smoosh it out, just a little bit. Kind of let it sit there, shake it out. Looks great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'll get the diaper. Good job. You're going to want to hang out here, but the next steps will kind of be over here, too. If you saw those, but wherever you want to be, if you have questions, feel free to ask. There's no difference. Then a fall, or flip up, or grab, and then we're going to twist. That takes muscles. Okay, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, it's a little hard. And, and this, you have to keep it straight too. That's the hard and then you part. also have to wiggle it. If you get, if you pan people panic and they pull out too fast, you know, pull it like Kathy. Oh. So the glass will actually stick to the metal, but you have to release it by kind of opening and closing it, and then you can get it out of the hole. I think that's Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it looks awesome with that, that opaque color. Can you do it 
clip. That's good. One more lightly. That's great. Uh, to start to elongate the, the tail side. And it also, depending, another thing that, that people don't see a lot is depending on how fast they turn, depends on how fast the, the top of the heart opens up. So I'll purposely turn slow and then I'll spin a little bit. Uh, no, we're, we're good. I think we're ready to go. I'm going to just wait for it to cool off the body. Uh, and then from there, we'll, uh, we'll start torching to take it off. I'm going to let that cool first and then we'll start torching. That's fantastic. You can really see the die curl. Yeah. 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 Really, especially on the shoulders, it's kind of light. When we torch it, we torch it. That portion right here. Yep. A lot of it's a waiting game. A lot of it's moving. Everybody always thinks, oh my god, you're moving so fast. You've watched the last one of the videos. Everything looks super intense. Um, what we're doing, that's what we're stuff. It's about the last 15, 20 minutes that get really intense things. Unless you're doing like really fine work like that. But then the whole thing is just stressful. Uh, but for the most part in here, it's, it's very laid back. People think it's like high, high stress, but kind of just hanging out, watching the glass, waiting for the right temperature. Just make it sure. Well, that just, all we do is just change the size of it. So, 
want to do it one more time, you let me know how tall you want it to be. I can cut, and I'm going to make the last cut here, but it just depends on how tall you want. You want it a little taller? No, about where you yeah. said the legs are perfect. Very good. Uh, 
talk about the fall of the sound. We're going to go something called high hearing. We're going to do it on the second step as well as we can practice until it's really hot.
scheme here between all the layers. And that really kind of brings it to life. Because before the hell, all the colors kind of smooshed together. But once you get that layer over, it allows you to kind of see through the window. That's good testing. Yeah. 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 And the outside layer really makes a difference. Which one do you want? I think it's a medium. Oh, yeah, big and medium. Do you want any small? No. I'm just really shaping the back of it. I'm going to be a teardrop. I'm just kind of shaping the back a little bit. We're using kind of mini blocks. If we were making it just a, a board, we would shape all the over the top. We kind of control where we're feeding it. And since we're going to pull it anyways, we're really just shaping the back of it. Because soon I'm going to take the newspaper and I'm going to elongate that top end. So it's uh, almost kind of counterintuitive to mount it all the way out. I don't think any of us would make any longer.
Who are your 400s uh, understatement? Um, like six hundred. So some pairs that they're like, why they praise? Why it's like you know, fine pairs, but like it's mainly about the name of it. Like, you know, Right, right. Uh, the tools are like 80 years old and like they're $2,500 they're made by some guy. They're all worn out, but somebody buys them. Yeah, exactly. You know. Because people are buying those tools and they're using them like you should have set those in like a framed box. Right, right. And then buy a, buy a $500 pair and then use them. How would you buy a, a relic from Murano? And then we are to break it on glass. Yeah, it's fun to see what people like that are. Yeah. 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 The rest of the day is relax. That's one thing I need to get. We would say, don't get me to I don't have a pool. All I want to do is just slam some. I just want to sink it. I'm talking about you can get those cattle pools. They're like a trough that like beats out and fills the water. Go ahead. Don't deal with it. Said no, no, you're off. Not doing that. One. This is close enough for me. Go ahead and do that. Uh, do Tilted sign, no, you're okay, won't go and hold it. I'm not gonna pick it out. You're gonna have to pick it up. Oh yeah. Are right, you ready? We're gonna flip it and parallel. Test it just so you know I got a piece of aqua in the in the cobalt. Oh that's cross the cross. Interesting. The easy one. And then after that you're gonna go. All right. And then uh most of the stuff will be happening over here. Somewhere on the left side of the yeah. scoop, it's still probably a little hot. Yeah. What's that? Do you think you don't notice that? It's like, it was on purpose. Everything in here is on purpose. That's how it usually works. So we did it on the darker color so the dichro should show up a little bit. Sometimes we'll do like an opaque with a transparent, or we'll do a lot of powders with the frit, mm -hmm. just so you see a little variance between the two sides. So look good. You can see that one's more flat, that one's got spots. It's all due to the pieces. That was that was the normal thing. Ah, 
They'll come out eventually. <laughs> it's just a matter of me. But that's why we always do it. You know, we have to teach this tonight. People panic and they pull out the wrong time. If you're not feeling them with the loose, it'll just pull it like that. <laughs> You wanted orange, right? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, with the blues they show up, uh, greens tend to look super orange. Yeah. But the cobalt really goes right on. Good shape and then after that. Okay. Talked a lot about pain work, which is 
super delicate and super hard to do. Mm -hmm. So there was that kind of appreciation for the last bullet there. Um, you know, in season two was a lot of like, almost like I was watching American Idol. They were kind of not showing the glass, but they would have somebody talking in front of the camera about their life their story, history. their history, which is great. But, uh, you know, you would see a segment of somebody making something, but you only see the first 10 minutes of the piece, and then, you know, that 40 minute episode ends, and then you'd see the end of the piece. Like, show people how they made it. You know, there are people out there that are watching this that want to know about glass, but not just see another fortune fire. They don't actually show you how they make it. The only thing you ever see in there is will it cut and then dip it in oil. That's about it. That's all you ever take away from that show. Are we going to kill? Yes. Yeah. It may kill. It, it'll definitely get dropped in oil, though, at least once in the show. Absolutely. Maybe bend a little bit for some drama. Uh huh. Put a crack at least one time. Put a crack in it, but then have an extra blade just in case for right. show. That one. Smaller one, too? Sure. Speaking of her. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can see, I take it off so you can grab without cutting through it. 
that allows me to kind of have an anchor point to pull from behind it. I'm going to heat further behind it, cool a spot, start pulling off more, cut off some of that extra clear so you can really start pulling the color up a little bit. I'm glad this is the last uh, video. Yeah, I'm glad you were it in. I need a break. Yeah, see what he did? He went early, so it was nice and cool in here. Oh, he was like, Yeah, nice and cool in here. Nice yeah. and cool. I know what he's up to. <laughs> and he turns the old man loose when it's nice and hot. Watch your toes. Yep, yep. They're going to give you the forewarning. It's all right. I usually wear OSHA approved safety contacts. So. I have those in too. Oh, good. Those are the best. Real game changer. Yeah. 